And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a small game from AEG called Cheaty Mages. <laughs> Cheaty Mages. I don't know, it's just a silly name. Uh, it's from the same designer who designed Love Letter, a game that's very popular. So let's take a look at Cheaty Mages in a game in which you are a mage watching some people fight in an arena. And of course, well, you're going to cheat. Let's look. First, let's look at the possible contestants that we'll have in the arena. There are 10 different contestants. You're only going to use five of them. You'll shuffle this deck and draw five randomly. But they start from the, each one has a starting power, so you can see the dragon's power is 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, down to the goblin, who looks like a leftover elf from Santa's workshop, while the orc looks like a reject from Jabba's palace. They also each have a prize on them. If they win, that's how much money you get. So if the dragon wins, you get 3, while if the goblin somehow pulls off a victory, you will get 10. And then two of them, the ghost and the skeleton, have a special ability which basically just inverses the cards that are played on them, and I'll show you that in a minute. So you're going to take these cards, and you're going to shuffle these cards, and you're going to place five of them. So here we have the succubus against the ghost, against the goblin, against, let's see, the orc, against the dark elf. All right, so those are our people, and we put them in the middle like that, and you'll do that for each round. Now, each player is going to be get, getting a bunch of betting tickets from one to five. You'll have these betting tickets. And if you have an extra set of betting tickets, if you're playing six players and you just have to remember that it's one, two, three, four, five, other than that, I like to put the numbers there if I'm playing with less than six. So I can remember which one's which. Each player is going to secretly bet on which one you want to win. Betting doesn't cost you money, but you can win. You can bet on one person wins. So let's say, I really think this orc can do it. Come on, Piggy. I can put down the five, and if I put down one card only, and he does win, I'm gonna get 16 coins. I can also put down two. I can say, well, I'm gonna bet on the orc, but I'm also gonna bet on the ghost. So I can put down two. If either one of them wins, I'll get the full amount of their prize. Eight for the orc, five for the ghost. And I can bet on three of them if I want. So I'm going to throw the succubus into the mix. If that happens, when they win, if one of those three wins, I will get half. So it's up to you. You can bet one, two, or three cards. So each player is going to do that. Then we reveal the judge for that combat. Here's Lester. Now the judge has a couple things on them. First, they have a mana limit of 15. And if you, then there's a judgment. If you break the mana limit, you're ejected. That fighter will be ejected from the round. Uh, here we have Orlair. He's a man of a 12. He also ejects. And he does not allow direct spells. Uh, here we have Furrine, who's random on what she she does. Lawty has a mana limit of 10. And he dispels all magic that goes over a mana limit of 10. Over the course of the game, players are going to have a handful of cards. And each round, they're going to play these cards onto uh, the different people. Some of these cards... Uh, are enchanted cards. You can see that here. Enchant cards are played face down. No one knows what you've played. But in this instance, I've added four to that Dark Elf. Other cards are direct spells, like this one here, which you, you play face up. But every spell that you play has a mana cost, which is worth, you can see the mana cost of the Haste is six, the mana cost of the Lightning Bolt is three. The ones you place face down are invariably more mana than the ones you place face up. In fact, there are certain cards over the course of the game that don't do anything to the fighter, but they do add 5 to his mana or subtract 5 from the mana. When, at the end of the round, when all the players have passed, because on your turn you get to play a card from your hand or pass, you're not going to draw a full hand, so you might not want to play all your cards. At the end of a round, you'll turn over all these cards, and you will see if that mana has gone over the judge's mana limit. So here we see the mana is... Uh, 9, 14, but that's actually a minus 5, so it's 9. So this Dark Elf would pass everyone's mana. But let's say someone hadn't played this 5 on him, and it's 14. Well, if the judge's limit was 12, for example, then he's gone over the mana limit. If it's Dispel, 
that just means all this goes away. If it's not this spell, if it says eject, then that person cannot win this combat because there was some cheaty mages. Now, the majority of the cards in a deck are numbers. There's a few that, uh, there's one that's 10 and there's one that's 12. Uh, giant growth, yeah, yeah, make that orc giant. You'll see these are forbidden. There's a couple judges that don't allow forbidden spells, but, and there's like an eight and a six and a five, and then there's fours. Notice again, like I said, if you play the four as a direct spell, it's one. If you play it as an enchantment where it's face down, it's a six. And then there's lots more of the smaller numbers, threes, and then there's minus twos and minus threes, you know, magic missile, and you know, so on and so forth, all the way down to shrinking the guy, which is a minus 12. But there are a lot of other cards that you can play too that will give special abilities. There are cards where you can make someone else discard a card or draw a card yourself. There are, you can target spells. This one will double another spell or you can move a spell to another opponent, or pick a fighter that spells can't affect them, or discard all spells that are played on the target fighter that has less than five spells. You can just destroy a spell. You can also do other things like this. Change your betting number. Like, ah, oh, you know, I don't think that ghost is gonna make it. Or double the prize of a target fighter. Or even get rid of a fighter and get a new one. Or cancel what the judge is gonna do or get rid of the judge and get a new one. So all this is happening, and don't forget, that, like I said, the ghost, if you play negatives on the ghost, they become positives, and positives on the ghost become negative. After everyone's passed, you will reveal the cards on them, Come add those up, so for example, a negative eight was played in the ghost, which is an eight, eight plus five is 13, and the person with the most power is the winner, everyone reveals their bets, gets paid out, you draw a few more cards, you start the next round. After several rounds, the game ends and whoever has the most money, which is here by the way, is the winner of the game. This game is a solid hit for me. It's, it's just a good little game in which you're betting on the monsters. Very fun. Now I've played other betting games. Uh, the, most, uh, the one that this really brings into mind. It brings into mind two different things. It brings into mind the beginning of Horse Fever, which is a horse racing game, but at the beginning of the game, you're all like beating up on these horses and helping these horses. So it just has that similar feel to that, but it also has a similar feel to Colossal Arena. Although Colossal Arena is another game in which monsters are in an arena and you're fighting, but it has a different feel to it. The way it's played is very different. This one is more of a complicated take that, boom, 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 boom. And the more players you play in this, it kind of gets random. It really does. This is actually a better game with fewer players, with more players still fun, but realize what's going on. Some of the things in it are pretty cool. The artwork, you know, usually I like that Japanese style artwork, um, like I liked it in Love Letter and such, but here, I wouldn't have minded a little bit different. I mean, it's kind of, the, the fact that the, the, uh, the, the, the one guy looks like the key, uh, like Santa's elf, just doesn't really make any sense. And, and the orc looking, I mean, they just, I don't know, I would have preferred more traditional artwork, I guess. Although, maybe I wouldn't have liked that either. But anyway, off the artwork. The, 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 I love how the different judges have that mana limit. That mana limit's a really cool thing, because you don't want to play too many cards in somebody, or <laughs> maybe you do. Of course, sometimes you get messed over because you play a card that will help them, but you're pretty sure it will push it over the mana limit, and then the judges change with a new mana limit, or your card was canceled, or you ended up just going up to the mana limit and then helping that creature win. The game is not a deep game. It's play cards and smash characters on the board. But an interesting thing about this take that style game is you're not actually attacking other players. You're attacking the creatures in the game. So some people will enjoy it for that because they're not being personally attacked, just their guy that they had bet on is. And even then there's a couple cards that let you switch your bet. So very simple, easy, some cool things. The whole schools of magic and the judges, I've not seen that before. But at the same time, this is a fast little fun game. Uh, that can works well with large groups, like I said though, kind of chaotic, or smaller groups, more controlled, and I don't know, maybe the fun factor goes down a little bit, but it's a better game because you can control what goes where. So, cheaty mages. I hesitate to call this a betting game because you don't lose any money when your guys lose, and it's quite possible for there to be a decent amount of ties because with only five people, often several people will say, huh, let's both bet on that person, which gives that person a much higher chance of winning, which means they both get the same amount of money, etc. Anyhow, that's Cheaty Mages. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com.
You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door, Ruby. Yeah. Yeah.